All right. Let's go ahead and start fielding questions. And we can go back to it if necessary. Can you explain number one on lecture 17? Sure. <clears throat> All right. Let's start my little screen share. First, let's go to lecture 17. What are you typing? What are you doing? Cool, because you're going to answer the question. Hi, Julia. All right, so you guys can see lecture 17. And number one. So it says, for a certain reaction, delta G naught was found to be positive 32 kilojoules. What can be said about the relative proportion of reactants approximately in the system is at equilibrium, equilibrium? OK, so what you would. Uh, Shannon and I will get to 3D on the practice. Got it on the practice test. Okay, so let me show you guys the. Um, let me start a new bamboo. All right. All right, so <clears throat> delta G, if it's negative, then it's spontaneous. If delta G is positive, it's non-spontaneous, okay? So, and if delta G is negative, then products are favored. Which means that remember that um, if we were set up like an equilibrium constant, K is equal to products, right, over reactants basically. Or I, I don't know if that, if we need to go that far, but you get the general idea that talking about it's going more towards the right in a reaction. If it's product favored. If delta G is positive, then it's reactance favored, meaning it's not going to happen. It's going to want to hang out in its reactance, which means the reaction is going to go to the left more. And so because our delta G is equal to positive 32 kilojoules, which is actually a pretty big number, you would say that it's um, very reactant favored. Is what you would say. So at equilibrium, you have mostly reactants. Now, when it says delta G is greater than plus 20 kilojoules, well, that's fine. It doesn't really matter. Just know that if it's positive, it's reactant favored. If it's negative, it is product favored. Negative means it's spontaneous. It wants to the, it wants the reaction to happen. It wants to produce whatever products there are. And just to make sure where this was, uh, lecture 17, number one. Okay. So, um, CJ, does that make sense? Okay, good. All right, so now we'll go to 3D on the practice test. Um, all right. Okay, so let me start the screen share on that one. All right, and um, it's probably not big enough. Is that, can you guys see that okay? Um, sort of. Can you zoom in a little bit more? How about that? Yeah, that's perfect. Okay. So 3D says the absolute temperature at which the forward reaction becomes non-spontaneous can be predicted. Write the equation that is used to make the prediction. Why does this equation predict only an approximate value for the temperature? 
And it says that delta G is equal to zero at this point. The equation is T equals delta H naught over delta S naught. This assumes that de delta H and or S do not change with temperature, not a perfect assumption leading to errors in the calculation. So, um, so what they're saying is, and again, I'm going to go back to my bamboo paper. All right, so this is practice test 3D. Okay, so what they're saying is, is we did a whole worksheet on crossover temperatures where delta G is equal to delta H minus T delta S. And we want to know this temperature right here, you know, what temperature is it is delta G going to go from, so at what T does delta G change? Oops. So it goes from a negative to a positive, or a positive to a negative. And this one says it's, you know, forward action becomes non-spontaneous. So um, it's going from a negative to a positive. So what, what, what value does that change? Well, then what you have to do is you need to take that equation, and um, if it goes from negative to positive, it has to go through zero. So zero is equal to delta H minus T delta S. And if we're trying to find the T, then we just have to isolate it, which easy enough to do. T is equal to delta H divided by delta S. So there's that equation. Now, the reason that this is an approximate value is because of the fact that, let's say you run this over a wide range of temperatures. Um, and we already know that if you increase the temperature, that delta S also increases, right? We said if we increase temperature, entropy increases because there's more possible states for whatever it is you're dealing with. And delta H, well, we don't, that, you know, if you change temperature, um, temperature change, you are changing the products, you're changing the reactant, you're changing the, the reaction itself. Um, and so delta H is going to change. It's going to be affected. If you, you know, you, you increase the temperature on an exothermic reaction, it's going to shift to the left, which means you're going to have less delta H, right? So um, that's why that reaction is, or that's why in that situation it's considered to be more of an approximate value instead of an exact value. Does that make sense, Shannon? Yeah. Okay. Well, good. Uh, all right. Another question. Um, I had a question about um, on the answer key thing. Okay. It said something like if G is greater than zero, it's spontaneous. But then in the notes, it said that if G is less than zero, it's spontaneous. G, G needs to be less than zero to be spontaneous. I would be curious to know where you saw that because it's very possible that there's a typo in there. It's on uh, 1C. One 1C, one let's check that out. Okay, if I look at 1C, under what conditions is the Ford reaction spontaneous and at what temperature is the system at equilibrium? Um, okay. Delta G naught is greater than zero in order for the forward reaction to be spontaneous. Hmm. That doesn't seem right. That should not be, it should be the other way. So, if, okay, so if I did, because you're still looking at my bamboo, aren't you? Let's switch to the practice test. And um, so 1C, I've already changed it, so if you're looking at this, mine already looks different. So yes, it did It did say it incorrectly. Delta G naught is less than zero in order for the forward reaction to be spontaneous, because that's what we're looking at. 
Um, and I can't see why this would be, I don't know why they would be referring to it like that. No, I can't, I can't think of a way right now in which that would be taken any other way than Isn't just saying Delta incorrectly. So was somebody saying something? I'm sorry. Nick said something. No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> So the delta G has to be less than zero in order for the Ford reaction to be spontaneous. So I think that was a typo. Mm -hmm. Does that just mean delta G is negative? So isn't it when delta G is negative, does that mean like it's spontaneous? Right. Mm -hmm. If delta G is negative, then the Ford reaction is spontaneous. Mm -hmm. Doesn't know what it's saying. No, before on the answer to you, like I Oh, before it looked like this. Oh, okay. And then I changed it before I showed you guys my key. Sorry about that. So it should be like that. So I changed the key here, but it, it's not gonna show up on yours. Sorry about that. Um, I'm kinda of confused on 3C on the practice test and like... Okay, let me, you know what? Before I go back to 3C, um, I see that uh, CJ said something about, okay, on lecture 17, when I solve for the K equilibrium constant, um, I don't always get the exact, and they're not too close to the real answer, but they're still close. I know they're still close. <laughs> okay, so you've got an answer that's kind of close. Um, I guess it depends your definition of close. Are you saying it's close by a power of 10 or 20, or are you saying it's close because 1 was 8.13 and you got 8.24? So like, here, I'll pull up lecture 17 and we can look at that. Um, okay, so, so which number? You've got 2.47 times 10 to the 80th. Which, which number was that? 6E. Uh, 6e. The answer was 5.72 times 10 to the 7, 79th. Um, you are probably fine. I don't know how you're getting a, almost a power of 10 off, though. Like, are you rounding too early? Like, I guess the question is, so some of the numbers... Oh, maybe their numbers are off. No. You're not rounding at all. So when I so if you plug in, so these numbers on 60 on the key right here, you have those numbers and you come out with a different answer. Okay, so let me see what happens when I plug it in. So we've got 45,000 divided by 8.314, divided by 298, and then I do the answer. I get the same thing you get. Oh, no, I don't. I'm sorry. I get 5.72. I was looking at the wrong one. I use, so I'm using these same numbers in five, or in 6E, Oh, and you're using 455,526, which is, so, okay, so here's here's what the problem was. You were not, so they rounded up at 6A because there was a question. It, they're rounding there because it's a specific question. So if, for example, we're on the AP exam and you have a question that has an A part, you have to round to the correct number of sig figs. So. Once you get all the answers, then you plug them in there. So what you did is you went back here, which is fine. You took the original value and plugged it in. What I would suggest is to do it as the way that they have done it, in that they carried the rounded number that was the answer and put it in. So honestly, if you showed your work, if you showed your work and you had a different number, but all the values were the correct values, then I am I am nearly, I'm 99% positive that they would give you the point for that. 
I mean, the, the readers that I've talked to, it turns out they're quite a bit more lenient than I realized. So if you're showing all your work and yes, you're off by power 10, but you showed the work and they can see that you were there and you did that right, then you're fine. Does that make sense? So, so in, in the, in the case of, I would do the same thing on my test. So I will be lenient on that. Showing your work though, showing the work is a major part of that. Okay. So now the, we had a question about three C on the practice exam. Yeah, but Nick had a question real fast. I'm also interested in. Okay. So on some of them, they ask you to like calculate delta G and they give you a table. And usually like you can do like the products minus the reactants. Right. But then like the key shows you have to do the delta G equals H minus T delta S. Okay. Is there like a one you prefer? Because like they both give you two different answers. Um, I think that, uh, there is not necessarily one I prefer. I think that it depends on, on what they give you. If they give you a table, then I think doing, if they give you a table, then doing the products minus reactants is what the expectation is. If they don't give you a table of those delta G values, then you do the delta H minus T delta S. But we're back to again showing your work. And honestly, there's those variations in the problems. There's variations in, in uh, remember how we did, like if you found delta H by bond energies and you found delta H by the, the products minus the reactants, you got two different values because the bond energies were the average bond energies. It's the same kind of thing here that you, you're doing averages or whatever the numbers are. They're not going to work out exactly right. They, sh they just don't. So as long as you're showing your work correctly, you can still get credit for it. And a couple of years ago, I had one of those problems. And I don't think it was this test, but I had one of those problems. And, and there were two ways to solve for it. And, and both ways were correct. And the answers came out a little bit different, but that was fine. So I would just try to try to try to see what you're given to anticipate how they want you to solve it. But again, making sure you share your work, that's the way to get the most points. Yes, absolutely. So, practice test, screen share, 3C. Let's see, okay. Um, so we're at the 298 Kelvin, not, um, and it's negative 145 kilojoules, so it's exothermic. 3C says, what change, if any, would occur in the value of the equilibrium constant KQ for the situation described in B? Okay, go to B at 298. The forward reaction is spontaneous. What change, if any? It, oh, as the temperature is increased. So we know that KEQ is going to change because there's a change in temperature. But it, is KEQ going to increase or decrease? So at 298, toward the right, is spontaneous. Um... Okay, and we just said it's exothermic, which means it heats on the right-hand side. So if you increase the temperature, that would push on the product side, which to get back to equilibrium, it will shift to the left. Okay, so if it shifts back to the left, then you've got more reactants. You're getting more reactants. It means that I don't, it doesn't mean that there's more reactants than products. It just means that there's more reactants than there was before. So that means that if, if reactants are in the denominator and you increase the size of the denominator, that's going to decrease the size of your overall number, which, okay. which means that your equilibrium constant will decrease in value. Okay, thank you. And then also in B, uh, I'm just like making sure my... If reasoning is right, it says like the um, what happens to G when the temperature is increased? Is it because the T delta S becomes like larger than delta H, so then it makes delta G positive? Um, yes, that is definitely part of it. I mean, there's two ways. I think you could you could you could um, argue it or or discuss it from two different angles. One is you're right. The, the temperature gets larger and the negative T delta S becomes 
um, so much larger than the delta H, then the delta G becomes positive. Okay. Because 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 right because the delta H is is uh, um, well it's anyways it it just becomes larger. So so it it uh, you have minus a negative. Right, you have a let's see. Because because the delta a delta s is negative because you get more ordered as you go to the right. Does that make sense? So so you have that argument that the negative t delta s becomes larger than the, and I think it's negative one forty five. But anyways, to make a long story short, that's one way to look at. It. The second way to look at it is if you increase temperature, it again Le Chatelier's equilibrium means it's going to shift back towards the reactants. And that means if it shifts back towards the reactants, it becomes less spontaneous. Yeah. And you could say that, well, that, be, that means that delta G becomes more positive. Now, it might go all the way to actually being positive, but it's definitely more positive than it was before. So in that case, the, the, the change in value would be, it would be more positive than it was before. Okay, thank you. Sure. Um, CJ, you said on lecture 17, does it give temperature on some problems? I just assume tiny. If the, if temperature is not given, but the not sign is given this little not sign right here, then yes, it's 298. If they give you the not sign and it's, and the temperature is not 298, then they should give you the temperature as sometimes like a little subscript, like Delta S not 600 degrees, something like that. Let me give you an example of what that would look like in my bamboo paper. So, so delta, let's just, let's just say it's delta G naught all the time. So that is 298 Kelvin. But if they say delta G naught 600 K, then that means that it's at 600 Kelvin. So it's standard state. It's, so this is, it's standard state except for the temperature. So one mole, one atmosphere, that sort of thing. Okay, so for verification, delta G naught means it's at standard state. Right. That's what. That's what the um. Here, let's see if I can do this. Come on, feet. All right, right here. This right here. This not sign mm -hmm. is two ninety eight Kelvin. It's one atmosphere. It's one mole concentrations. That's what that not sign means. So if they change anything, they have to, they're supposed to put it with the delta G. Delta G naught except for temperature. Now it's still one atmosphere, one mole, but now the temperature is 600 Kelvin. Okay. All right. Other questions? Oh, I also had a question on four on the multiple choice. I don't know if it's me having like a... Which is things I've okay, four on the multiple choice. Which of the following must be true for a reaction? Oh, in which the reverse reaction is spontaneous all temperatures. This one's a hard one. I'll give you that one. Let's, uh, let's do this one on bamboo too. Okay. So um, the reverse is spontaneous at all temps, right? Mm -hmm. Which means that going in the reverse direction, delta G is equal to delta H minus T delta S. And so to get this to be negative, um, this would be negative and then delta s would have to be positive right yeah okay that's going that direction which means going in the opposite direction the opposite things would be happening okay so now delta g is positive delta h is positive and delta s is negative okay cool so then of those answers, um, let's see, delta G 
being positive, it's, or so that doesn't show up. Delta H being positive, that means it's either A or B, and delta S being negative means it's B. So is the correct answer B on that one? Yes. Okay, thank you. Sure. All right, other questions? Have you guys been reading up on your gases? What? Remember I told you that I was going to tie in gases on the free response? Oh, uh, read up on my gases? <laughs> and PV equals NRT? Oh. Yeah. No? There's more? No, no, that's, that's the main, I mean, that's the main thing that I, I didn't want you guys to be totally surprised by that. Okay, cool. So, just gonna be finding moles. Are we um? Do we need to know the delta G equals delta G not minus R T L N T? Um, I I believe that I took that out of my test. It's not on my test, so you do not have to know that. You do have to know that delta G naught equals negative RT natural log of K. Is the multiple choice on the real test going to be like fairly similar, similar to the multiple choice on the practice test? Um, there are, there are a number of questions that are very similar. There are some questions that are different, but for the most part, they're pretty similar. Um, I would say that, that I, again, I am not a good predictor of how you guys do on these tests, but I think the multiple choice is a little bit easier than we've had the past couple times. Um, I think the free response is going to be a bit more challenging. As long as you guys stay focused, I guess, just be ready. I think you guys will be fine. So there's a little bit of explaining and there's a little bit of calculating. Both of those are in the free response. So kind of like the free response on this? Um, let's see. Like a bit yes, open. yes, yes, yes. That is it. I tried to, I tried to throw in some problems um, on this practice test that were somewhat similar to the real test. Um, uh, some of the ones at the end are similar. So, hopefully that helps you out. This was kind of a short unit and not as complex as some of our other ones. So, I'm hoping that that'll be a good thing for you guys. Yeah, I think, I think me and Nick are good. Okay. Thank you very much. Hey, did you, are you getting cleared for soccer? I didn't see your name on the list. Oh, yeah. My physical isn't until Friday, so oh. I turn it in, like, on Monday. You had better make sure that happens. I know. I know. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Bye. 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 Um, I'm going to be taking care of stuff and making sure that uh, Miss Andrews is all set up to start the Casey in my room. So I won't be in his room until like 10 minutes before class starts. Okay? Yeah. Okay. And I already baked the butter braid, so I'm bringing pastries. Yay! <laughs> okay. All right, see you tomorrow. Bye. Anybody else have questions? I think me and Chloe are good. Yeah. Okay. We'll see you guys tomorrow too then.
Bye. Anyone else? CJ, you're not getting lecture 17, 7C. Um, oh, okay. Okay, that's, well, I will be happy to go over that, but if you remember, that's not a problem that's going to be on the exam. But let's take a look at it. Okay, so lecture 17, 7C, uh, calculate delta G at 298 Kelvin when the individual partial pressures are equal to those given above. Um, so this delta G is saying that it's not standard pressure. It is standard temperature. Um, but we want to know what's the new delta G going to be? How is delta G not going to change? So delta G not you calculated up, he up here in um, 7A, and that was 26 kilojoules per mole. So you can plug that in 26,000 joules plus RT natural log of Q. And that's that 8.314 and 298 because R is the energy. We, even though it says gases, you only really do gases when you're just calculating pressures of gases. or That's when you use the 0.08 um, to 1. Uh, but otherwise, you use the 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin. Temperature 298 uh, Kelvin. And then the natural log of Q, the Q is calculated from the partial pressures in B. So once you have the Q, you just plug that in. And it's really just a matter of you're taking all the answers from all uh, the other problems to get the answer. So that's how you find out the G. Uh, wait, do I even need to do it then? No, you don't need to do it. But it's good to know. I, I, I didn't find it on the, on the, you can leave it blank. Yes. Um, I didn't see it on, I didn't see that equation on the reaction sheet. And the general consensus among AP teachers is that we believe that if it's not on the reference sheet, then they are not going to test on it. So, um, that's kind of what we're running with at the moment. So yeah, you can leave it blank. Other questions? So is it just that problem on lecture 17 or all the... No, it's just that problem on lecture 17. Don't be trying to get out of doing the lecture 17 worksheet. See, like the one below it, number 8, delta G naught equals negative RT natural log of KP. That's absolutely a part of the test. All right, good. Other questions? Um, can you explain number eight on the multiple choice on the test? Uh, absolutely. Let's, okay. So let's switch over to that screenshot. Okay, um, so number eight, for which of the following processes will delta S be positive? Uh, on this one, if it's positive, that means that entropy is increasing. It means it's becoming, you have more states available, more disorder, I guess, to a certain extent. So you look at these and uh, eight, for Roman numeral one, it goes from a solid to aqueous, dissolved. So delta S definitely increases there. So one is an increase. In two, you have the you have two separate gas molecules, so three total molecules comes down to two molecules and a more involved molecule, like there's locked into place a little bit. So in that one, delta S is not positive, it's negative. And then in three, 
you go from a solid to a solid and a gas. Just by the mere fact that you get some gas out of this, that means that delta S is going to increase. There's more possible states. So one and three are the two reactions where delta S would be positive. So we look down here and we see that D, one and three only, definitely not two. Does that make sense? Good. Um, CJ, you said that the free energy key isn't on the... There's a couple of keys on there that say free energy. I'm not sure what you're talking about. Is it, um, is it Kemi Bear? Is it... Um, was it one of the Chem 128s? Uh, which... Can you tell me more about this worksheet? I, I looked and I thought I saw it, so I, I don't think I know which worksheet you're referring to. It's the multiple choice one. Okay, let me go back and take a look real quick. Um, yes, they're there. Well, they're on mine. Um, let me, s you know what I'm gonna do? I'll bet you I can screen share this. Uh, I think I can screen share this. Oh, I need to open it. Okay. Let me try this. Um, oh, I can do this. Can you see yourself, CJ? All right, CJ, do you, let's see. What if I change it? Nope, that's not working. All right, I'll take you off, CJ. Um, why can, oh, there it is. Okay, all right, CJ. See this one right here that says uh, energy, or entropy free energy worksheet one solutions two and the thing for solutions one. If I click on that, it looks like that. Isn't that the key? Is that isn't that the one you wanted? Yeah. Oh yes. Okay. So it's there. That's what. It, so it looks different. It's not the. Um, it. Uh, there's the worksheet, but it's like they're little gifts. I guess they're yeah. Yeah, that's the one. All right. Okay. All right. All right. Any other questions? I think I'm good. Think you're good? Okay. Well, you can come find me in my room tomorrow morning if you guys have more questions. Okay. All right. Well, have a good night. Get some rest. Good night. I want Amanda left too. Bye guys. Alright, bye Marina.